I was doing a little coke crank. All of a sudden, these two people showed up at my door. Where's 95? And he flashes his badge at me. Oh, there's 95. We're taking you to a rehab up in Utah. Welcome to our world. Asking insurance is like the only thing I like to get a good high. You are an addict. We're in a situation where we all need to kind of put our energies together and figure out how we're going to get out of here. Miss music really bad. I love cigarettes. At least for me right now, it would be much more beneficial for me to be home. I don't know if I have a home to go back to. It's just like part of living out here, really. <laughs> My concern is, is that should just take off. Kevin! We don't use punishment out here. It's a natural consequence. They have no control over you. I don't want to change. I don't want to be here. Never let go with your right hand. We're into our last weeks with Larry Wells and his team as they take a group of drug addicted teenagers on a grueling voyage through the deserts of Utah. My belief is they, they have to be able to get in touch with the pain they're causing themselves and their family. Patrick, who's been out here longer than anyone else, expected to graduate, but his parents decided he wasn't ready. I mean, I know I could work things out at home. It'd be easier to work things out at home, but obviously not an option. Patrick isn't the only one who won't graduate. Kevin must also stay behind. The main thing that's pissing me off is I think I'm ready to go home and it's because I didn't get this damn bow drill. And the fragile relationship between Tara and Jesse began to fall apart. Why are you being such a bitch? I'm seriously tired of it, Jesse. I really okay, am. I can't handle you being a bitch like this and I'm, don't I'm, snap I'm... at me. So what is today? Today is kind of the last day for everyone to get their skills done and their various other requirements done before we go into our solos. Well, that was great, though. I can smell the smoke. There was none. It smelled like it, but it was imaginary. This is the last week in the wilderness for these kids. Yeah, but, but before they can graduate, yeah. they still have to meet all their requirements. than it looks, camera. If this moves, I'm going to be upset. Jessie hasn't completed her graduation requirements. She has done some regression in the last few days, which we have seen in the past also, and it's that's something that we need to sort out. We're never sure whether that's because they have a fear of going home. The more pressure I have on me to get stuff done, the slower I go. I'm on. Jessie's come a long way in the program, but her biggest test is rock climbing. I didn't do that well in the other climb, and it was like, Less than half the height of this. Oh. All right. For Kevin, the climb was a tremendous challenge. One point I thought I couldn't make it, but positive thinking worked for me, and I finally made it through that part. Yeah. That's exhausting. Okay, right there. No, go fast. Careful. Keep your legs pushing you away from the rock. That was the first time I ever reached the top of a climb. Yeah. That was a tough one. Yeah. All right, Jesse, you feeling good? Mm. Nervous. I guess. Why am I? Nice. Really? Push off those legs, Jess. Push them off. I think with the physical challenges on the course, like for instance the rock climbing, they kind of correspond to your struggles in life. Overcoming not just the cliff, but also maybe a fear or whatever it is that you may have. No, this is not going to happen. Keep those feet in place. And that, ow, there we go. Ah. Good. Nice. Nice. nice job, Jesse. Ready to go further? Oh, 
That's the hard part. This is surprising, man. You're doing so good. How do you get up this part? Well, at that point, I kind of used my positive thinking, and it just gave me a lot of strength because I was hurting pretty bad. Kevin's made some personal breakthroughs. He's calmer, more patient, and uh, more willing to help others, it seems. You're doing so good. Get for the team. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let me down kind of slow. Positive thinking is the key. Nice. Oh, God. Is that the it's figure true. you a lot of people don't think that they could do it at first. Uh, I think it was really good that she made it through. Um, I was actually really surprised that she made it through too. Um, and I'm happy for her. Alright, Jesse! Yeah. Nice job. How do you feel, Jesse? I am in mourning, mourning, mourning the loss of a son who maybe never existed. We're all concerned about Patrick, who just received a harsh letter from home. She's just like, you know, you're a liar, you're an addict, you're a thief. And Tiffany forces him to confront the situation. It's the same old bullshit it's always been. What more can I do? What more can I do? What are you going to do? Tell me that. What are you going to do? When the group went off to climb today, Patrick decided to spend the day alone and prepare for family, thinking of what he'd say to his parents and how much he misses them and how much he's put them through. I got that letter from, uh, from my mom. Actually, I might as well read this. It's only a week before the students will be face to face with their parents, so it's heavily on their minds right now. For the past two days, I have experienced a sorrow so profound and so pervasive that I cannot rise above it. It brings me to tears and makes it impossible for me to talk. My heart is heavy, my shoulders sag, and I find it difficult to take a breath. I am in mourning, mourning, mourning the loss of a son who maybe never existed. It's just like about how her son died, and, and it's, she's just like, you know, you're a liar, you're an addict, you're a thief and all this shit, and it's just like, you know, and now I'm trying, and she's just like, well, it's bullshit, and it's like, why would I opt to come out here? Because this is like fun or something? <laughs> What's the point of even doing the family thing if she's already has her mindset that it's that way? It's what just... I've heard just now is, you know, I'm mad at my mom for laying all this shit on me, poor me. It's the same old bullshit it's always been. What more can I do? What more can I do? What are you going to do? Tell me that. What are you going to do? I'm not looking for for any any sympathy. I don't want anybody to to feel sorry for me about anything, you know? It's I know it's all my fault. I have no room to complain about that. I know I put myself here. Okay, so knowing all that, what are you going to do? Go wherever they send me. What else? If you keep thinking that people owe you, that's the way you're going to live your life, and you sure as hell aren't going to go very far. It's the people that make it happen for themselves. The students haven't seen civilization for over a month, Great. but today they went to a ranch for something called The Giving. The Giving is the part of the program where the kids actually do something for the community to feel good about themselves. It's nice to meet you. For this giving, the group has to mend fences that were destroyed by a rampaging bull. We thought maybe if you got this kind of patched up, we might be able to weave some of them in some way. Larry Wells, director of the program, has just rejoined the group in the field. The objectives behind it is one, for the students to have an opportunity to give back, to observe a work ethic perhaps to have the first time that really ever worked. To me, doing this makes me feel a lot more productive than, you know, hiking 20 miles. Something that we can do for them, that I can see the results and I can, I can see um, the progress that I make. It's up on Terry. If you're focusing on someone else outside of yourself, if you can get outside of that, uh, you have a much better chance for recovery. Yay. Yay. It looks good. Thanks. It looks good. 
progress you've made here. Yeah. <laughs> Do it one more time. Oh, this must take a farm off. <laughs> Damn, right! <laughs> it's all, you know what, as soon as you get it once, it's all just like a rhythm thing. But you gotta bring it, and when it comes here, you just gotta snap it back. I love the whip. <laughs> Jesse and I, you know, I try, I try to get along with her. Definitely, I think, you know, she's changed a whole lot. She's working on her crying. I mean, she's gotten better. Okay, not, not, not as much wrist. Just bring it like this. She doesn't yell as much and I don't cry as much. So, I think we've gotten way better with each other. Back that way. Oh, Jesse! Good, Jesse! Nice! <laughs> Alright, let's go. Everyone wonders whether they can survive four days in the desert alone. I'm kind of scared for this solo. I don't know. I'm just kind of scared. I'm just kind of, you know, don't really know what I'm going to do. But along the way, they learn a lot about themselves. Out here, when you're really by yourself, it's like, you know, there is no one else to please. It's like, what do I want? Okay, cool. All right, let's go. The last trial the kids face before seeing their parents is solo, where they spend four days completely on their own. This particular environment cannot be manipulated. One of the real common behavior patterns is to blame everybody around you for what's going on bad in your life. And it doesn't do much to blame the rocks and the trees and the weather. Okay. Bye, bye Bye, Jesse. Good luck. It's a discovery type deal, and that's really helpful to me. Um, good luck. You too. I'm going to miss you. You too. Bye. I'm kind of scared for this solo. I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of scared. I'm just kind of, you know, don't really know what I'm going to do with myself. We gave the kids cameras to record themselves. <laughs> okay. Well, all I can hope is that I'm getting my head in this because I'm really not sure. I'm about two hours into my solo. This is Jesse speaking. And it's taken me about that long to set up my shelter here. Um, this four days has been really hard. Actually, it's only the third day and I'm going crazy. Well, this is the first day of my solo and uh, so far things are going pretty well. Um, I'm on a vision quest. I'm not very good at being alone and not talking to people. Out here, when you're really by yourself, it's like, you know, there is no one else to please. It's like, what do I want, you know? When I got here on Saturday, I had eight letters, which was nice. It was good to, um, good to hear from people. Um, I think everybody is going to do pretty well at family. Um, certain people have uh, more, than, more things to work out than others. There's this lizard that's been my friend for the past couple days. I don't know, there's not much going on. It's kind of fun having him around. Just, I mean, he doesn't talk, but... <laughs> Here I am trying to work on my spirituality and, and sitting around in the desert and fasting. You can feel the trees and the earth and the bushes. It's, it's amazing to me. It really is. I believe this land has a very healing effect. I'm excited for the sweat lodge tomorrow and excited to be back with everyone. I'm still trying to get a fire. I think Maki and myself will have a, have a lot going on at family. I haven't eaten. Today's my fourth day not eating. And I know that the, the land is helping me through this because this whole time since I've been out here, I haven't, I haven't been physically hungry once. I was laying around and all I could think about was like brownies. Hopefully Tara will be able to open up with her family a little bit more. I'm very scared, very nervous. I, I just, I mean, I think this is one of the scariest things that I've ever had to do. I just got a fire right now with my bow drill. I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> but anyways, I'm out. We couldn't believe 
the change in attitude when the kids came back from their four-day solo hike. I don't know, it's so frustrating because I have all these ideas and I just want to go out and do it, you know, and then I'm like, oh wait, I can't. <laughs> you know, I have to wait till my parents say I can. And as we prepare to leave the desert, there's only one thing on everyone's mind, the upcoming confrontation with the parents. How do you feel about impending family? Mm, it's going to be ugly. I think that's Today is going to be ugly. Good job. You know, I, I would have gotten the four except for like, they, you know, they were, I was trying to decide whether I really wanted it or not. I'm like, well, shit. Today the whole group came out of there solo. And I think that it's made a lot of change in all of them. Okay. Let's hear how it went for y'all. I think yesterday was the day that I learned the most out there. And um, I was thinking a lot about family and it all came into to the control thing, you know. I wanted to control family, and you know, then I was getting impatient. I don't know. It's so frustrating because I have all these ideas, and I just want to go out and do it, you know. And then I'm like, oh wait, I can't. <laughs> you know, I have to wait till my parents say I can. You know, which is, which is kind of hard. You know that I have to ask this. Uh, what are we doing on Thursday? Like exactly? Your family will share with you. And we will go however long we need to go till everybody is done, which generally that night is fairly late. Thank you. Um, are you done? Thanks. I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Take it away. I realized that every single thing I've done that's, like, self-destructive stems from the exact same thing, and that's, like, my, my um, self-esteem problems. And seriously, I was writing it down, and I, every single thing I did, I, I had like a reason for it. And it was a stupid reason, but it was all the same reason, more or less, for every single thing I've done. And it was just like this revelation to me. So, Your eyes look really clear. When you first came here, you know, for one thing, you didn't have a whole lot of eye contact. Um, you've gotten so much better on that. And then, I mean, just I'll kept catch glimpses of your eyes, and they're just really bright and clear. Thank you. And your whole face is glowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday, I was sitting there, it was about the mid-afternoon or something, and I started smiling, and I couldn't understand why. I was sitting there in the middle of the desert, and I'm like, I must have gone totally crazy. I'm smiling at myself. And um, I realized I was proud of myself. Um, for whatever reason, I don't exactly know. It was a, it was a big, like, revelation or whatever you want to call it, you know. I was sitting there and I was proud of myself. I was just like, Maki, I like who you are. You know, I, I, I like the things I do. And it was, it was kind of neat. It was really cool. I really liked it. I mean, I know what I want to do when I go back home and I know who I want to be. I'm just not really sure that it's going to happen or not, but I know at least now that I'm going to try, and I'm open about the future now, and I think that's, that's, that's the biggest thing that I learned out of my solo. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Faith! What you doing, Maki? I'm rolling my pack for the absolutely last time. Today is the day we're leaving for family. How do you feel about that? Extremely mixed. Nervous, 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 nervous. But also... I'm excited, maybe? I don't know. I can't wait to meet everybody's parents. I know. I mean, that's what like, I can't wait to meet your mom, Patrick. I can't wait to meet his dad. I'm excited to meet his dad. How do you feel about impending family? Uh, not that great. No. Mm. Is that because you're nervous or? Mm, it's gonna be ugly. I checked out the 
Today is going to be ugly. When we get there, um, your parents will get to see you as you are, dirty and smelly. And oh. as Larry <laughs> said, don't talk about um, serious. major serious issues Thank during you. lunch, which you'll take, I which you'll have so. after your shower. Family is here at last. I know that they're all disappointed that I'm here to rehab, and it's just scary that I have to confront them, and I'd rather not. I'd rather run away. Tomorrow on Eyewitness, it's our last week with the program, and the kids face one more terrifying obstacle, their parents. Hi, Tara. How are you, <laughs> how are you kiddo? Good, how are you? I hear a lot about you. Very good. He's taller this time, isn't he? And while all the reunions are heartfelt, some are painful. We're getting more and more separated in our lives rather than coming together, and we're losing each other. This is the end result. This is the pain. This is the boundaries that have to be set. This is the pain of the addict.